Hi, my name is Manuel Sanutelli. I'm going to present the paper called Towards Detailed Characteristic Preserving Virtual Trio. I'm going to go through the overview, through the understanding of the virtual trion methods, through the understanding of the DP Viton method, the current paper, and the results. First, to understand what is virtual trion. The idea is to give an image of clothes from a shop and give an image of a person wearing some different clothes to pass these two images through some process that will generate the image of a person, the input person, wearing the target clothes of interest. That's what virtual trion is. There are some problems with the previous methods that do, that do virtual trion. The first problem is garment fitting without understanding of how the garment is worn tridimensionally. The first image, you can see a person wearing some different clothes. In the middle image, you can see some clothes of interest. And the third one is the generated image. As you can see in the middle image, there is a bean neck in the front of the garment. In the generated image, you can see the, you can see the bean neck, but you as well can see the black, this black region, which belongs to the back side of the garment. That's a problem. The process that generated this image didn't understand the garment tridimensionally. It doesn't understand how it should be worn. The second problem is retaining of some characteristics of the source clothes worn by the input person. I'm going to go through that problem later. So now let's go into the virtual trion methods. Let's talk about training. Ideally, you will have an image of in-shop clothes, an image of a person wearing some different clothes, a process that allows you to, gener to generate a new image of the same person, but wearing the, uh, the clothes of interest. And you will have some ground truth. That ground truth should ideally be the input person, but wearing the clothes of interest in the exact same position as the input person. That's hard. How do we get a model to pose in the exact same way two times, wearing two different clothes? That's pretty much impossible, and it's hard to get a data set like that. But what do we have? We have some clothes of interest, and we have a model wearing those clothes of interest. That's what we have. What if we use that instead? Well, there will be some information leakage from the input. If we are using the ground truth in the input, there's obviously some information leakage. So previous methods of virtual try-on devise a way to deal with this, which is to create a clothing agnostic person representation, which uh, brings information from the pose of the person from the body shape of the person, and from the face and hair of the person to create a new clothing agnostic person represent representation, which has no information from the input clothes, the clothes that we are not interested in. The process will now look like this. Some clothes of interest and the clothing agnostic person representation as the input. Now let's talk about the modules that allow to perform this process. Previous methods like CPP and CPP Plus had two modules, the geometric matching module and the try on module. The geometric matching module is used to explicitly align the input clause with, with the information from the person. Let's see how it looks like. This is the geometric matching module. We have the person representation and the clothes of interest. The output is the clothes of interest, but warped to be able to fit in the, in the input person. This is what the geometric matching module does. It warps clothes. 
the second module receives the warp clothes and as well the person representation. It generates a synthetically generated image of the input person wearing the warp clothes. In a single picture, for easier understanding, on the top the geometric matching module, on the bottom the train module, person representation, clothes of interest, generates a warp cloud. The warp clouds are being input to the second module, and the final result is generated. What's the problem with this with these methods? Well, the first one that I mentioned, garment fitting without understanding of how the garment is worn tridimensionally. In the middle image on the third row, you can see a round neck that appears in the front side of the clothing. The back side of the clothing, however, the back side of the clothing is appearing on the front side of the, of the generated image. This part that I'm highlighting should ideally be should ideally be not present there because it belongs to the back side of the garment. So there is garment fitting without understanding of how the garment is worn tridimensionally. The second problem is the retaining of some characteristics of the source clothes worn by the per, by the input person. Let's see the middle image, clothes of interest. These have some thin straps, but in the generated image, the clothes have some wide straps. They are not thin. They look more alike, like the clothes of the input person. So there is some retaining of some characteristics of the source clothes worn by the input person. That's not desirable. The proposed method of this paper is called DP Viton. It adds a new module in between the geometric matching module and the trion module. It's called the clothes fitting module. So in this image, you have the geometric matching module in light orange on the left, trion module in light purple on the right, and the new module, the cloud fitting module, on light blue on the bottom. Usually, with the previous methods, the warp cloud mask from the GMM module will go directly intro into the trion module. However, by the introduction of the CFN module, the cloud fitting module, there is a disentanglement from the warping of the clothes from the painting of the clothes. The trion module is now receiving, instead of the mask from the GMM module, is receiving the mask from the cloth fitting module. This new module allows to separate the ge geometric warping of the clothes from the painting of the clothes. The painting happens on the, on the DOM module, the warping happens on the GMM module. The worn clothes, the worn clothes images generated by the CFM module are trained to be close to the ground truth clothes on the target person. These are clothes that are found on the ground truth image. This generated image is trained to be close to this. And the worn clothes mask generated by the CFM module is trying to preserve the geometric warping of the mask in the GMM module. This mask is trying to preserve the warping, the rough warping produced by the GMM module. This is how there is a disentanglement from the geometric warping of the geometric warping front in painting of the clothes by the introduction of this new module. This is what I explained. And well, this last point, through an ablation study was observed that feeding only this warp cloth mask 
and the cloud of interest. Feeding only these two to the CFN module was better than feeding these two plus the warp cloud. This warp cloud brings information that's not desirable. This warp cloud brings information from the input cloud on the original uh, image where the model was wearing some different uh, some different garment. This information is not desirable. So results. Three metrics were used to assess the results. The first two, structural similarity and mean square error, are known, but, but the LPIPS metric is a deep learning based technique used to evaluate the perceptual similarity between two images. Let's see an example. In the middle, we have the reference image. Which one of the left and right image would you think looks more like the center image? People usually, usually say it's the right one. Even though it's warped, it kind of looks like the middle one. However, the structural similarity index and the mean square error metrics both tell that the left image is the most similar to the center one. The LPIPS metric agrees with the with the humans on top that the right image is the most similar to the reference one. So when these metrics are used to compare the generated images with the ground truth as a whole, the whole image is being compared, well, uh, the new method only wins when considering the mean square error. However, there's a proposal in this paper to measure the quality of the generated images only around certain key points of interest, some patches. These are points of interest where there is usual, uh, where usually problems are found. The shoulders, the neck, as we have seen in previous examples, the elbows and the wrists. By evaluating, by calculating scores using, using dimension metrics on these patches and taking an average of those results, we can see that the new method, DP Viton, the one from this paper, in a reddish color, outperforms all the other methods. This chart is showing the structural similarity index, but in its patch-based format. In the first column, you can see a structural similarity index with, uh, with patches of size 10 by, 10 by 10. The second column is about the same score metric, the structural similarity, but with patches of size 20 by 20. Higher is better in this case. You can see that the reddish points are above all the other methods. The new method is outperforming all the previous methods using this scoring technique. When the mean square error is used, the same happens. The new method outperforms all the other techniques. In this case, lower is better. Talking about the metric that was mentioned before, the one that assesses uh, visual similarity. The same happens. The new method outperforms all the other ones. Lower is better in this case. Well, the margin is very small when compared with PF AFN, but it is, it is still outperforming it. A qualitative analysis works, uh, shows the following. In the first column, we have the reference person. In the second column, we have the clothes of interest. The three next columns show the results from previous methods. The last column shows the results from the DP Viton method, the one of this paper. You can see previous methods having trouble around the shoulders, around the neck, but the new method, no, it doesn't have these problems. 
the second row, you can see this, uh, the same thing. Uh, well, let's, let's stick with the first row. You can see that the cloud of interest does have shoulders. The original clouds didn't have shoulders. The other methods were preserving some characteristics of the first picture, undesirable characteristics. The generated image should have shoulders from the close of interest. So by adding a new module on top of, of the previous modules available from CP Python Plus, by adding a new module on top of, of of these other two ones. The new method outperforms the previous method when using the proposed patch-based metrics. 